Hey everyone, today we're looking at the Metro Exodus RTX implementation. This was one of the initial titles announced for RTX when NVIDIA pushed the cards uh, last year, end of last year. So Metro Exodus has the global illumination implementation, and this is the first time we've seen this in a real game for RTX. The trick is to look at, well, is it actually better than what you can typically do with global illumination through the faked means, and is it worth any potential performance hits? So today I'm joined by Andrew Coleman. He's a 3D artist who works for us on the video team, and we're going to be looking at the actual, uh, the quality. So there's a qualitative analysis of what RTX is doing in Metro Exodus, if it's any good, and then we'll have a separate video on the benchmark performance to look at how the different cards compare versus each other. So you'll want to subscribe for that. But let's get into the qualitative look at Metro Exodus and the RTX Global Illumination implementation. Before that, this video is brought to you by the EVGA CLC 280 liquid cooler. People ask me how I keep cool during the summer with all this hair. Well, I've tried a lot of different products, and few do exactly what I need. Many of them cause tangles or worse. EVGA CLC 280 helps keep my core temperatures low during hot benchmarking sessions. The CLC 280 is price competitive and focuses on performance for value, offering a 280 liquid cooler at an affordable price. Get yours at the link in the description below. Hair mounting kit sold separately. This first scene we have, so it's on the train, it's in the hub level. There are a few different levels in Metro Exodus where there's the hub, which is kind of the overworld uh, non-combat area. There's underground stuff where actually in some of the underground we saw uh, RTX really doesn't do a whole lot. And then in a lot of the cinematics, which is the other part of the game, RTX can often impact things heavily. So it's really hit and miss uh, as for whether RTX is noticeable to, to anyone. Uh, but uh, we'll talk about that as we go through this. And then there's also the benchmark. The benchmark, we have a separate performance review coming up that you should check out, but we talk about how the benchmark is unrealistically heavy, so it is not a fair representation of how the game actually performs in-game and actual gameplay, but that's a separate topic. So this first scene is in the overworld on top of the train, and the two, side, the two demos, we've got RTX on where it is uh, a bit, I suppose, brighter, where there's more definition to the character, uh, especially the, the color of the character's clothes, things like that, and then it off, is going to be where he's silhouetted. So, uh, Andrew, what are we looking at here? So when RTX is off, the game is only calculating direct lighting. So you can see that since no light rays from the sun is able to hit him since they're being occluded by the train, he's just completely black and silhouetted. But with RTX on, the light rays are able to bounce off of the snow and that lightens up that half of his face and body. But you can also see that the other half of his face that's closer to the train is also darker because uh, it's kind of like an effect of ambient occlusion, how objects closer to other unlit surfaces become darker. Right. Just because they eat the energy of light from each other. Uh, the trees have some effect as well. Yeah, you can see that they're, be they're being lit from underneath from the snow also, as opposed to just on top and having the dark shadows underneath the Right. Oops. Yeah, and this is all because we're casting the uh, the sun as the single source of light, I guess. Right. So, uh, so it would behave how you would assume a sun single source of light above everything would behave. This next scene, before we get into some of the ones where it's just sort of uh, disappointing, I guess, the difference that we saw. Our, our initial impression of this game was disappointing implementation, but as we played through it more, some of the cutscenes were actually pretty big impact. So in this one, what we're looking at is a scene inside of the train car. Uh, we've got the, the female character in front of us. In the ground, there's a, uh, a duct that goes down to where they shovel the coal into the engine. So that's a very bright area and has some interesting properties. And as we switch between these, I guess RTX on in this instance is actually going to be the darker of the two. Right. Where it looks like there's a lot more contrast. Uh, or at least darker blacks, I guess, is really what we're looking at. Patrick was saying like the other day, like the RTX off to someone who plays games looks more natural, just because that's how games usually look, and you're able to see more of the environment. And also from a gameplay standpoint, you want to be able to see typically more of the environment, right. unless you're going super immersion. So that's kind of a, a preference question too. What are the, the main changes then between these two scenes? Obviously, it's everyone can see in the video it's darker but uh we have some differences outside the window too normally these effects target a specific thing 
like normally like in video game work kind of hair works or whatever yeah. turf works yeah would affect like a certain area or a certain like a small section of something but you can see that this is just affecting everything in the level all the time yes which is really interesting it's also a bit of an explanation of why we have the performance impact we do because it's everything so like the highlights will stay like um as you can see here or like on other parts where it's very bright they stay basically the same brightness between the two even though the shadows get much darker right so that highlight on the object near the character's chest in the center of the screen or that's a gun or something uh remains about the same between both yeah so uh, another note for this scene then is because of the uh, things there's some dynamic elements to like breathing from the character the lights kind of change so that makes it a bit hard to compare but that scene's pretty interesting because it had a lot of differences so this scene has a lot of small changes you've pointed most of these out but uh probably one of the bigger ones i'm seeing right away is on the left side there's a, i don't know what that is a gold object of some kind yeah it's a gold thing okay that's very technical thank you so, so uh so there's a gold thing on the left and we're seeing some differences here um what is this is this rtx on on or is it off it's off off so this, that's off okay so then on where does all that lighting detail go yeah it's interesting with it on and then that's high and ultra right also on i i mean i guess maybe there's no source of light back towards the character to create that reflection we're seeing on the surface yeah so that goes away and we end up with a much flatter surface which to me honestly looks worse but um again is probably less accurate this is the one that uh i showed this to patrick and he was talking about how as a gamer he would prefer having it off here because it just seems like what a game should look like right. when you're playing it yeah because we've been playing games like this forever yeah and then with rtx turned on i like it's hard for me to even judge i i think it's more physically accurate all the windows have a whole lot more they're much harder to see out of yeah there's a lot more bloom there's out more of all bloom. the windows yeah but there are little things like uh in the crevices up in the corner they receive more shadow and right. but with rtx off it's kind of like oh yeah why is this part of this light so bright why is the top of the solid light fixture right bright yeah when the lights are under the fixture and then you have some examples here where light coming in from this window is able to uh brighten up the ceiling closest to it right things like that yeah that does make a lot more sense when you start pointing out those really small details yeah for sure this next clip answers the question of what's the difference between rtx off rtx ultra and rtx high because this is the only nvidia wouldn't want to dirty their brand with an rtx low so there's only high and ultra. Uh, so what is the difference then? What what are we looking at right now? So this is RTX off. And okay. yeah, so this is, I guess. Pretty apparent, the difference between that and the so next your, one. Your base reference. So the next one, you can see that there's a, the side of the building gets a little more illumination in the back right. And some- Under, under the tank as well. You got some more illumination from uh, oh, yeah. from that bounce lighting off the snow. And this could be done with voxels too, uh, VXAO, but it never really got any widespread. But here we're doing this with global illumination. What about the next scene? Is this RTX? Ultra. Ultra, okay. So you can see the difference is very minimal. Some some dark things get slightly darker, darker, some bright things get slightly brighter. Right, and there's gonna be a lot of mouse clicks picking up on the mic potentially right now because I'm trying to figure out what the differences are. So, so like this building right here, it gets slightly brighter with ultra. Okay, so the building in the background is a bit brighter. The performance hit here is a couple percent, by the way. We have some numbers on this as well that we can share in the future video. But the performance impact is uh, anywhere from single digit percentages to like 10%, kind of depending on the scene. Actually, would I take that back? <laughs> this side of the building gets slightly darker. Darker. With ultra. So the side of the building is slightly darker with Ultra. So the question is, uh, from a technology or a realism standpoint, does going from high to Ultra impress you at all? I mean, is it? can you appreciate what's being done here? Or what is, 
you know, what's what's really the value? Just more? I think there's definitely a diminishing return <laughs> from high to ultra. <laughs> All right. So it's like, I assume that what they're doing is just increasing the amount of times that the light is able to bounce off of a surface before it is terminated. So it's, is it sort of like each ray has a, a number of, I guess, bounces yeah. typically in the engine that it's allowed before, and then once it, it hits that number of bounces, it just stops? Right, because if you have 100,000 rays bouncing for an infinite amount of time. <laughs> right. You have reality. Yeah. That's what you have, right, which is difficult to render. So, uh, okay, so yeah, not, I guess not a huge difference between a high and ultra, Definitely an appreciable difference between off and uh, and any of them. I think that difference is is noticeable now. Is it worth it? I guess we'll leave that up to you, but it's noticeable. Okay, so this one they've got some flashlights. They're looking down into the grate, and with off, I guess our baseline versus high. What are the main differences? Oh, I'm inclined to say there are none. <laughs> but uh, one of the differences is uh, in the top left, it is slightly oh, yeah. darker underneath the grate section. Yeah, you might have to zoom in pretty hard in post for them to even appreciate that. Yeah. So, so there's not much of a difference. Yeah, top left is like slightly changed the brightness. Uh, not super useful. All of the differences here are very small. And from ultra to high, I think, are also very small. So we could probably move on from this one. And in this one, so we have, again, your notes here say this is slightly darker, which is not particularly compelling. That specific section. Okay, okay so that, so let's just, I guess in post, let's just zoom really hard on that specific section. It's slightly darker. There's new lighting on the chain link, you, you say as well. Yeah, so that's interesting. I don't really know. That is pretty interesting. That's the first time we've, I think we've seen that on an object like I guess those are made out of geometry. Then normally, uh, those kind of assets would be alpha textures, right? Since they're so dense. Yeah, you wouldn't really want to burn geometry on, on all those chain lengths. I guess. Yeah, but I guess also, if they're using an alpha texture in a normal map, maybe that would be enough for them to pick up lighting in that way. But it is very subtle. Right. So potentially some tricks could be played there, but again, uh, pretty limited differences between. And just as a note, as we're playing this footage back, you're going to see some changes that aren't a result of the settings or the graphics changes. It's just a result of like pulsing lights and changing light sources in the game. It's, right. it's a very dynamic game. This next scene, so now we're flipping back. So we're going to, we, we gave you the, the downside of RTX. Now we're going to show you the upside. There's a bigger impact here than the previous scene. It's actually quite apparent. What would you point out as the the most prevalent change in this instance? It'd be the lighting on the character for sure. So this is again next to the train. Uh, some of the same stuff applies as previously. We've got presumably light bounces off of the snow, I guess. Right. And there's a single light source above. I don't know, is this, what about is, that train in the background? The lighting changes in the background there, like on the, the on bridge the, as well. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, lighting changes all across the end, even like things that are way off in the back that are blurry that you can hardly see, the lighting still changes on them. So right. yeah, when, there's, yeah. when I first saw this, I, I kind of just thought that the game had some kind of dynamic time of day system or whatever, and that, that was what was happening between it's these. It's a capturing artifact. Right, but as you can see in the shadows, the light source remains the same and is in the same position. So. Yeah, the shadow on the train wall. Right, as in exactly this, like from the character. Right. You can see shadows cast on the character by equipment that's worn by the character, like this uh, sort of whatever that thing is in the middle of her suit. Oh, is, yeah, I didn't notice that. <laughs> is casting shadows onto the, uh, I guess, the vest. So that's pretty cool. Well, the interesting thing is that uh, normally global illumination has a tendency to kind of wash out shadow contrast because it, it'll fill it in with uh, additional lighting from the rest of the scene. But here it looks like it's actually increasing shadow contrast or, and making new shadows in places that didn't exist before even. Yeah, so does the game then see 
the light being cast like bounced off of the other objects and surfaces? Does it see that as a yes, new light source? It would see that, yes. Yeah, it would okay. see that as a new place to cast a shadow from. Right, interesting. So the next one is the train side by side. What is this scene? What are we looking at here? So for this one, you can see a lot more, I guess it's reiteration of what we said earlier of, of the light bouncing off of the snow, which will be hitting the shadow on the train, which illuminates it uh, much more than if it was just direct lighting. Right. Yes, yeah, so we've got a, a much darker scene, and I'm that is RTX off. Yes. And then with it uh, a bit lighter, more limited, you can see what's going on. That's RTX on. So train's got more bounce light, motion blur again increasing with RTX. The background light changes significantly. You can kind of look at some of the trees in the background and the uh, buildings in the background. This next one, this is one of the first scenes in the game. and. We were both looking at it at this point when you were playing, and uh, I, I think, I believe your almost exact words were, I'm just disappointed. I think it was worse than disappointed. <laughs> it might have but, been worse. <laughs> yeah, this the, the first part of the game is not a good example of how RTX GI will play out through the rest of the game, for sure. Right. So in this tunnel, there's like no difference almost. It just gets darker. It just gets harder to see what's going on. Right, which is not, I mean, like, even from a, even if it's a little more accurate, and it might be, I don't know, I guess it gets somewhat subjective, but even if it's a little more accurate at some point, it's just making the experience worse. Yeah. And making a pitch black tunnel, even pitcher black, is, is not. Uh, Plus having your frame rate, frame rate at the same time. Uh, yes, cutting it in half is, is not beneficial. So it, we don't need to talk about this much. There's no real difference. This was one of the earliest scenes, and uh, I would imagine uh, some other scenes that are similar to this, you might see the same, but not all of the tunnel scenes are bad, though. We have some other examples we might come by later. So this next one, this comes from the benchmark, and uh, this, so there's a pretty noticeable impact, again, in just sort of the general brightness or exposure, I guess, yeah. of the scene, where, I mean, the way we're playing it back here, for me, the scene on, without remembering exactly which one is which, the scene on the right is what I would hands down prefer. And that's because I can actually like see what's happening. I can see the color on the rabbit, for example. But I don't think that's the right choice, because I think the one on the left is RTX. Yes. So what's going on in this scene? So this one's really weird, because we've been talking about how bounce lighting from the ground will make things much brighter than they would be with RTX off. Right. But And there is still bounce lighting from the ground here. Yes. It's still happening, but like as you can see, the, the rabbit is almost completely silhouetted against the, the sky currently. Right. Going into the building and the benchmark scene, this area has got a lot of fires. So this is actually one of the heaviest impactors. We'll talk about this in the performance review. But a lot of fire in here. Is there any meaningful global illumination change here that you can point out? Yeah, so once we get inside, there really is not any difference. But yeah, the bounce lighting inside of the house does not seem to be affected very much by the light coming in through the windows. So we're back outside now, and we're getting close to an interesting bug with RTX that we found, and that's at the dock. So at the dock, what happens is as you kind of go past this pole in the ground, the, uh, the there's a time of day change, and with RTX on, I believe, yeah, there it is. With RTX on, there's clearly a, uh, a sliver of daytime to the right of the pole, even though the rest of the scene is night. And this is not... I would I would venture to say this is not realistic. So we we're not I don't think we really have any idea of why this is happening specifically. I really don't know unless they they're doing some like a scripted sequence involving that pole specifically because right. it does kind of it takes up the whole camera. So maybe they thought they could do a neat effect there or whatever. And you can see past the pole actually if you from the uh, sort of the the sheer side angle, you can see that it's still daytime. Yeah. In front of it to the left, too. So it does look like the poles being a divider. So anyway, that was just a weird bug we found. So next one here, we have a demo of, uh, I guess there's a, a light source in the back from the fire. 
And I don't know that we have many light sources. It looks like there might be one right behind us. Unknown light source you've marked. Yeah. So, so I marked that there because it is interesting how that, like, if you look at, if you're just playing this as a game, I guess, which it is, I suppose, but <laughs> with, like, a normal virtual world mindset, RTX off looks fine. But then we turn RTX on, it's like, oh, yeah, there is not a light by that door, so why is it so bright kind right. of thing going on? So I, I don't know. I guess it goes down to, like, subjectiveness of... Yeah, there's some subjectivity of do you actually... I mean, for me, I, I've always... This is... Uh, we'll break into the subjective argument for a second. I am a, a competitive player, so I only care about RTS and FPS, and FPS has frame rate as well. So if, if a setting makes it harder for me to see the guy I'm trying to kill, then I don't like that setting. Uh, if you're an immersion player, I think there's maybe an argument for this, though. So last couple examples here. In this one, we're looking at a, a scene down a, a stairwell, I guess, in the train. There's actually a pretty big difference here on that door. So with RTX off, I guess, the door is lit in a way which is unrealistic. Uh, yeah. It seems like it, it's hard to describe, but yeah, it does seem like it's getting light from a place that doesn't exist. It looks like there's a light dead center in front of the door yeah. that is like diffused. Yeah. Uh, and the only light source down there other than the one we can see above it is uh, there is a light source about 10 feet where we're standing except underneath us from the fire. But that would not have that effect on the door. Right. And it would be probably colored white too. So another interesting thing about this is how there's a lot of light in this little crevice with RTX off that kind of, it, it, it almost implies that there's a window in the wall up there. And then when you turn RTX on, it just turns completely black. Black, like it makes more sense that that's just the little hole in the wall. Right, I and suppose. there's, is there a window up there? I don't think so. Yeah. So this next scene, we're looking now at the worker shoveling the coal into the train. What is what is interesting about this one? So this goes back uh, kind of like what we're saying about the door where the light source seems like it is receiving lighting from someplace that doesn't exist. And that's the same thing for that uh, pipe on the side. Oh, yeah. Where it kind of, it's like, it's almost acting like an emissive object with yes. RTX off. Yeah, it's like radiating light. Almost. Yeah. And then with RTX on, it, it it, I guess it like places it in, that's to the scene better. That's kind of what I've noticed with RTX on for all of these, I suppose. Objects feel more in place with where they are on the scene. In terms to, of like the shadow gradient? Yeah, Yeah. to some extent. So this guy's standing outside. It's a lot of the same stuff, I guess. We're getting more snow bounce. The uh, front end of the train you noted here is lit more uniformly yeah. with RTX on. Right. And another thing that is happening in this scene that I don't think we've talked about yet in any of the other scenes is that the uh, GI is making all the shadows much brighter. Right. So they are receiving additional light from other directions other than the sun. Yeah, and you can actually see a good example is on his chest or uh, midsection where he's got all that gear. With RTX off, it's completely blacked out or almost completely blacked out yeah. with the shadow. I will note, I, the shadow of the player in the scene, kind of unrelated, is terrible. Have you seen it? <laughs> it's I'll, creepy. I need to capture more footage of that it, and put that in here. The, the player's shadow has absolutely no life. It yeah. just translates across the surface. He, his legs move. Barely. <laughs> but They his... move like, like as if they're, I don't know, like... It's very but, sluggish. But yeah, his uh, his shoulders and arms are taped to the side of his body. And his arms are also the width of sticks. If you look at the shadow cast on the snow in the background. Yeah. I know because I've benchmarked this scene a hundred times. Uh, so yeah, on this one, I'm actually, is this, this is RTX off right here? And that's on? Yes. I, to be fully honest, prefer RTX off. I think the train looks better. I do think the and also the character's clothing. I think that the I think that the detail in the front of the train is increased with RTX off just because it's uh I guess I, I said this earlier how global illumination tends to wash out some lighting details since it uh decreases some contrast in the shadows. 
But I do think that with uh, RTX on in this scene, even though it's not actually happening, it gives his skin the feel of subsurface scattering because of how uh, how much softer the shadows are on, on his face. Right. So the last scene we have is, again, the front of the train, except facing a different direction. Uh, do you want to explain what's going on here? It looks almost looks like we have a light source coming from the front, like not not just the sun, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it is just the sun and it's bouncing. Yeah. This one, I showed this to Patrick, and he thought the trees looked almost broken with RTX <laughs> on because they don't receive any shadow underneath them anymore. But they also seem broken with RTX off because they don't seem lit at all. Right. Either. With RTX off, they definitely look broken. They look like the kind of trees you're not supposed to see when you're out of bounds. Yeah. Like low poly, no detail. But the interesting thing that I thought for this one was that uh, the guy on the right, the bounce lighting from the snow is so extreme that it changes the color bleed, changes the perceived color of his outfit. Yes, it goes from like a silver metal to almost like a brown. The His face changes quite a bit too. Yeah, so I think that's because he's receiving more shadow from the helmet. So it's occluding a lot more light. That makes sense. Interesting. But the guy in the far left, uh, with RTX off, the, the shadows stop like halfway down his midsection. No, that's not right. The shadows stop halfway through his midsection. Right. And with RTX on, it, it almost carries all the way through to his shoulder, the lighting does. So yes. it's like... DLSS is in this game. It is sort of defective in the pre-launch build, so we don't have anything on it today, but we'll look at that separately. It does the same thing as previously. It sort of super samples. It's, it's a bit better. NVIDIA will be mad if I call it super sampling. But the... Isn't super sampling in the name? <laughs> well, if you only if you drop the DL, <laughs> it will be mad because <laughs> it's not just super sampling; it's deep learned super sampling, but it's super sampling. So, I mean, with that, you get some FPS back. You drop the real resolution. You fake increase the resolution, and the end result is that it looks blurrier with a higher fake resolution. So that's a separate topic, but. This will be your walkthrough of GI, Global Illumination via RTX and Metro Exodus. And as always, you can check out the rest of our coverage coming up on the FPS benchmarks, things like that. Make sure you subscribe for all of that. You can support us via store.gamersnexus.net and pick up the new media mod mat that we just announced or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.